try and connect to my platform, the REST platform, try and connect there. If you have not connected, please try and connect to the other platform. I have so many other platforms where I'm broadcasting. Even as I'm broadcasting here now, I cannot see the viewers. I don't know how many people who are watching. So they are putting, putting a lot of restrictions, making it difficult for us to broadcast and send that information. But I will never stop. No matter what they do, no matter the attack they bring, I will continue to preach the message. And I believe that my fellow beer friends are hearing. We continue. We will never stop. No matter how they try to stop us, we can't stop. Please share the video. Share the video on your platform. Share the video to family and friends. Share it in the place you belong. Keep sharing. They must hear us whether they like it or not. Emmanuel Naji, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, we have to continue the good work. Today, we are going to talk about another interesting topic. If you read the title I gave there, I said, freedom is not praise and worship in the church. Freedom is not praise and worship. Freedom is not praise and worship in the church. Just like you see people go to church, they sing praise and worship, they do matter of, it is not the same thing. When you talk about freedom fighting, it is a matter of life and death. It is something that has to do with your life. It's not just a praise and worship. Where you go in the church, when, when you begin to do one thing, one, one thing will come up and you begin to change your direction. The Holy Spirit might direct you to do one thing or the other and this and that and you change. In freedom fighting, it doesn't work that way. In freedom fighting, there are so many principles that you must have to obey. There are some principles you must obey in freedom fighting. And when it comes to freedom fighting, everybody is a suspect. I am making this very video because I saw a video where somebody, I think is a Reverend Father or so, one of uh, Reverend Father made a video. And in that video, he was talking to Simon Epa. He was addressing Simon Epa, saying all kinds of things on Simon, cautioning Simon Epa on the way and approach, the way he's going. So that is why I'm saying that freedom fighting is not praise and worship in the church. It is not like a fellowship in the church. In freedom fighting, everything, every stone has to be shaken. In freedom fighting, everybody is a, a, a suspect. In freedom fighting, we don't spare anybody. It doesn't matter whom you are. It doesn't matter your position you occupy. It doesn't matter even if your brother stands in the way of your freedom, you push him away and move on. If your father stands in the way of, of your freedom, you push them away and move on. In freedom fighting, you don't paint wall. Everybody's a suspect. So when I saw the video that that Reverend Father was making and saying all manner of things that Simon Nepal should come down, come down, come down and begin to join the political issue, they don't, don't criticize P2B, don't do this. You are talking trash. You are talking trash. Freedom fighting is not praise and worship. It is not like your church where you go, you sing praise and worship and you jump and come back home. No, it's not the same. When we go to church, we know how to fellowship with the church, we worship. I'm a Christian also. But when it comes to freedom fighting, everybody's a suspect. And there are some principles you must have to obey for you to get your freedom. So many other people who fought for freedom, even Reverend Fathers, so many of them, they are hearing about Desmond Tutu. Desmond Tutu was fighting with, Biafra, with uh, South Africa to get their freedom. Desmond Tutu was not talking against his people or telling them to step down or telling them to stop doing what they are doing. He was encouraging them. He was, in fact, fighting his own, both spiritually and physically. So if you feel that you are not capable and you cannot stand it because of your religious background, whatever, you step aside. Step aside. Don't be a distraction. Do not be a distraction. Freedom fighting is not praise and worship. It is not, and will never be. This is a matter of life and death. We are fighting for the freedom of our unborn children. And this is a reality show, not a movie. It's a reality show, not a movie. So for that Reverend Father to come out and begin to caution someone ever and tell him to stop talking about uh, P2P and whatever, you, are, you don't know what you're saying. You don't know what you're saying. As long as we are, as far as we are concerned, those of us who are the followers of Mazen and the if you are not standing for that actually it's not Biafra, give way. It is not compulsory that every one of us must be there. It is not compulsory. We know that there are some people who will not be there. We know that it is not everybody that is going to fight for it. Some people will fight for the Biafra. When Biafra comes, you'll be welcome. Welcome, come in. You, you are welcome, you can come in. But when we are passing through that road to Biafra, passing the road through to Biafra, please don't stay on the way, don't stand in the way. Don't stand on our way. 
when I saw that video that that man made, I saw that video and I was pissed off. He was talking to Simon Ebra, telling Simon Ebra to stop castigating uh, Pitobi, to stop saying this, stop saying that. If that is not how to fight for freedom, when you go to church as a reverend father, you want to preach, you preach to the church the way you preach. Display your holiness in the church. When we are talking about your freedom, if you cannot participate the way Desmond Tutu fought, you better stay in your church and pray. We are not telling you to come. You are now seeking the attention of someone else. And when someone else faces you and begin to talk about you now, you begin to complain. You begin to complain. So many of you are busy there. You are, you are there attacking back and whatever. But when they talked talk about the main problem, the major man, the man that was committing crime in that your fellowship, in that your church, you didn't talk about anything. You didn't say about it. Bishop Onoga, Bishop Onoga, Onoga, whatever they call him. Bishop Onoga, his crime is in the open. He's crime in the open. He have been, people have been shouting about it. The people who he has committed the crime against have come. His children that he has left have come out to speak and nobody is talking about it. You kept silent. All you have to do is to come and run out and begin to tell, tell someone else to stop talking about, the, about P2B. If you don't have anything to offer, you give way. Just give way. Give way. We are not begging you to join. We, you know, everybody have their own level of anointing. Your own anointing is to be in the church and pray. Stay in the church and continue to pray. Don't come to the social media to follow us to compete or to follow us to begin to distract us and tell us whom to talk about and who not to talk about. As long as you are not asking for the, for the freedom of beer France, you are part of the government. As long as you are participating in anything that has to do with the change of weed, you are an enemy. We treat you as an enemy. You might be a brother, you might be a sister, you might be an uncle, you might be a manufacturer, whoever you are. Once you are supporting these evil people, you are an enemy, and we're going to strip you naked without looking back until you repent. When you repent, we can let you be. Until you repent. You see them today, every one of them, go to their churches, every one of them today. They have seen and that anything. They are just acting like the, the movie artists. This is how they have reduced Christianity. A Christianity, Christianity is a very wonderful religion, a great religion. They have reduced it to nothing. The black people have reduced it to nothing. Mainly the Nigerian, the, the Nigerian pastors and reverend, they have reduced it to nothing. They are pursuing trending topic. When they see something that is trending, every one of them will go and speak about it, even when it doesn't concern them, just to pull crowds towards them. They are not even preaching the salvation they're supposed to preach. Why don't you concentrate and preach your salvation that you want to preach? Preach your salvation and let those who are fighting for freedom continue to fight for freedom. Preach your salvation. Focus on that for them. Why are you talking about somebody who is fighting for the freedom of his people? When you cannot speak about it. So many of you today who are talking trash and using their church for campaign, these are the people who have used Mazen Nandekano to win followers. So many of them have used the name of Mazen Nandekano to win followers to themselves. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, uh, 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 election appears and all of them have turned 360 degrees. They are no longer talking about Mazen Nandekano. The Mazen Nan, the they have used his name, used his picture to build their platform, to get members in their church. Today, that man is still in, the pre, in, in, in detention. His condition has not changed. He has not been released. Nothing has changed about his situation, and you are not saying anything about it. All you have to do is to come and begin to talk about, about the election. And when we decide to come down on those who are talking about election, you are coming to advise. You are coming to talk, talk to someone else and tell him to, to refrain from his statement. That is insulted. He's abusing. When you abuse yourself, don't say somebody abuse you, just like you are bringing yourself out. If you have nothing to do with the agitation, you don't want to be participating in agitation. It is not by force. It is not compulsory that every one of us must agitate. It is not compulsory. Biafra is for every one of us. But when it comes to the agitation and the struggle for Biafra, it is not every one of us that will participate. We are not expecting 100% compliance. We are not expecting that. No. It is only through one man salvation come to human being. That is what the Bible says. Through one man, salvation came. It is not true. Only. Through one man, sin came, and through one man, salvation came. The same thing in this freedom we are fighting for. It is not true. Everybody is going to come. It is going to come through some people. So if you are one of, not one of those people who are choosing, allow the people who are choosing to continue to do what they are doing. Don't be a distraction. Don't go and begin to dictate to them what to say and what to say, even when you have nothing to offer. When you have nothing to offer. Freedom fighting is not praise and worship in the church. Freedom fighting is not like your sermon. 
when it comes to someone, you can give the someone anywhere you want to go. Along the line, you can tell her that spirit tells you to go in a certain direction. We follow you and go to that direction. The son might be raised, you change your son, and the spirit says you should do this, you do that. But when it comes to freedom fighting, it's not that. We have a principle that will follow you, you are freedom fighting. As a principle, you must follow. Everybody is a suspect. And anybody, anybody who is not for you is against you. As long as you are not with Biafran 100%, you are against us. As long as you are campaigning for election, as long as you are talking about PVC, as long as you are standing together, building things in that very concern of and you are standing on that 1999 constitution, you are an enemy of Biafra. You are an enemy, and we treat you as an enemy. It doesn't matter how close you are to us. You might be our pastor, our GU, our reverend, or whatever you call yourself. Anything you like, be my father, my mother, whatever you try, you try to be. As long as you are not standing on that foundation, as long as you are not asking for my freedom, you are an enemy. And we will come down on you, we will rain it on you very hard. We will come down on you until you repent. When you change your dimension and repent, then we can begin to listen to you. But as long as you never repent and you are still talking about irrelevant things that, thing that you know that are not really, they are irrelevant. Every single one of them who claim to be visionary, who claim to be prophets, if you are a group prophet, you will see very clearly that the P2B cannot be the president of Nigeria. If you're a good prophet, you will see the doom day, that the doom day is approaching very, very clear. But of course, none of them can see beyond their nose. They can't see. They can't see their eyes have been closed, shot, their eyes have been shot. Those who can see, even because of what they will eat and what they will drink, out of fear, they will never come out and speak. That is the situation. But for those of us who have decided to give our time to this freedom, because we know what it is, it is our, about our life. It is about our future. It is about our born generation. We cannot stop. And don't tell us to stop. Don't dare try to tell us to stop. Don't try, try to tell us to stop. Mazin Nandekan has spoken for us. Mazin Nandekan is our spokesman. And he said, it is either, either Biafra or nothing. Biafra or death. We are going to continue to ask for Biafra until any one of, every one of us is lower to the grave. Of course, every one of us must die. Someday we must die. But before we die, we will have to make history. We will continue to ask for Biafra as long as we still have bread. We will continue to demand for Biafra. Any place we stop, other people will continue to demand for Biafra. Non-stop. That is the message. That is the foundation that Mazin Nanikana have led. But so many of you who are there trying to use Mazin Nanikana to build your platform or to win followers in your church and your membership, you use his name to get it, but you don't know what we are pursuing. You are not in line with us. That is why so many of you, so many of you, so many of you today have changed. So many of them who we are on the online, sometimes you see them, when they come online, they are not getting viewers. They use Mazin Nandekano as a topic. They will preach about Mazin Nandekano. They will use his picture in their platform. They have succeeded in using Mazin Nandekano to build a platform to gain followers. To gain followers, people will begin to praise them. Today, today, what is happening? That same man that you have used his name to build your platform, get the followers in your church and whatever, and in your preaching and whatever, that same man today is still in captivity. His situation has not changed. Nothing has changed about his situation. Nothing has changed. He is still in solitary confinement. He is still being tortured in the DSS. Every single request he's making, none have been granted. A lot of you you are now forgetting him. You are now preaching a different message from the message that Mazen Nargan left for us. You are telling us to go and vote, go and participate in an election. Election that you, you know very well that it will not yield any fruit. Election that you know that cannot change anything. And you're talking about it. You want us to forget about the issue of Martin Namikan. Finally, you have seen the, the, what the, uh, the, the imposter in Asrock said. The imposter in Asrock said that he's not going to let him go. He's not going to let Martin Namikan go, but he's not in his hand. The power is not in his hand. The power is not in the hand of the late Muhammad Buhari to decide if, if Mazina will be free or not. It doesn't matter what he says. It doesn't matter the speech he's made. It doesn't matter what he's talking with Britain. We don't care about that. All we know is that Mazin and Nandekan must be freed unconditionally. It's only Chukwu Kabiyama that has the final say. When Chukwu Kabiyama says yes, you can't say no. The late Muhammad Buhari and the imposter in Asrock is just acting like the pharaoh. When the children of Israel were supposed to leave Israel, Pharaoh did not allow them to go. Pharaoh refused to let the Israelites go. Even when Chukwu Kabiyama told him to let them go, he refused. 
Even when Pharaoh saw miracle before his own eyes, Moses was performing miracle before his own eyes. Just as much as none they can have been performing. Moses performed so many miracles before Pharaoh. Pharaoh refused to let Israel go. Even at the dying minute, after he let him go, he still chased them and pursued them to the rest. Of so if you think that Muhammad Buhari will come and tell you that he's going to free Mazen Nandikano, he's not going to say so. Some of us must have he had heard the news. Some of us must have seen the news that he said that he's not going to let Mazen Nandikano go get any bail. That Mazen Nandikano will not be granted bail because Mazen Nandikano jumped bail. Laughable. Laughable. We are not worried about whatever he's saying because we know they are playing a script to demoralize us. But we can't be demoralized because we know that Mazin Nankan is innocent. Mazin Nankan never jumped jump, jump a bell. He didn't jump any bell. Mazin Nankan never ever jumped bell. And when you talk about the case that has to do with bell, it has been settled in that same contraption called Nigeria that Mazin Nankan never jumped bell. You send the military to go and kill Mazin Nankan in his home. Why he was preparing to come to court. Mazin Nandekano made an announcement that he's coming to Abuja with one million men to come and answer his case. He wasn't running away. You became scared. You couldn't wait for him to come and answer his case. You could not wait for Mazin Nandekano to come and answer his case. You sent military to his house to go and kill him. And in the process, 28 people were mulled down, 28 able men were mulled down in the home of Mazin Nandekano. In the process, Jack was killed. In the process, Mazin Nandekano parents lost their life. Mazin Nandekano parents lost their life. In the process, Mazin Nandekano escaped for his own life. Chukwu Kabem alone knew how he took him away. And he survived. And today, you are not talking about all those things. Even when Mazin Nandekano have won the case in that same caliphate country, that same zoological republic, Mazin Nandekano have won the case in Abia State. And yet, somebody is coming to tell you that Mazin Nandekano will not be granted bail because he jumped bail. That is how arrogant these followers are. They will do whatever they will do. After all, they have changed all the system to their own favor. After all, the chief justice of the federation who they have there is a Fulani man. A Sharia judge is what they have as the chief justice of the federation. The attorney general is a Fulani man. So, why wouldn't he say whatever he likes? He can say anything he wants to say. And that is why we say we cannot be part of anything that is called the Zoological Republic of Nigeria. Their election, their system, whatever thing they are doing, we cannot be part of it. We cannot be part of a rigged system, a system that was rigged against us. A system that was rigged against us. And these people, somebody will come and begin to tell me that we should, we should begin to, we should begin to support Peter Obi. We should support Peter Obi. He's our own. Which your own? I know he's a Biafra, but when you tell me to support him, because why should I support him? Because he's a Biafra. Why should I even support him? Because he's a Biafra. If Nigeria were to be a sane country, if Nigeria were to be a country that was planned to succeed, I don't have to mention tribe before I begin to support him. I don't, to, I don't have to look at him as a tribe. I don't have to look at him as my brother. I don't have to look at him because he's P2B. I don't have to look at him because he's an evil man before I support him. I support his com competence. You will tell me to look at his competence. But go and check all those people who are preaching, all these reverend fathers and whatever. The only reason they will tell you they want to support P2B is that they want to because he's an evil man. He's their brother. They will tell you he's your brother. Why are you talking against him? Why are you fighting? He's your brother. This is how clueless they are. Freedom fighting is not a praise and worship. It is not praise and worship. It is that it's either you are in or you're out. We are fighting for Biafra. Biafra is for everybody. But those who are going to bring that freedom, it is not everybody. Everybody must not be agitators. Everybody must not be brokaters. Everybody must not be on the war front to fight. There are people who are, who are ordained for that. And we are going ahead and doing it. So don't be a distraction. Don't be a distraction. Do not be a distraction for any. If when you think, you think, when I saw the video, I saw the way somebody making a video. The referee made a video and begin to call, call Master Simon Eba that he should refrain from, from attacking P2B. Tell him Master Simon Eba that he should refrain from attacking P2B, that he should join P2B and support P2B and do all. What a nonsense. What, what rubbish. What rubbish. Is it that you are in or you're out? 
as long as you are not following the full step of Mazin Nandekani, you are out. Mazin Nandekani have laid the foundation for us. And what is the foundation? The foundation of consistency. That is the foundation of Mazin Nandekani. Truthfulness and consistency. If you are not truthful, we can't follow you. If you are not consistent, you are out. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter your rank. It doesn't matter your level. It doesn't matter your level. Whatever you think you are, we don't care about you. We don't care what you think. We don't care the direction you are going. All we care about is our freedom. It's our freedom. The freedom of the people. Freedom fighting is a matter of life and death. It's a matter of life and death. It's not a child's play. Everybody's a suspect. Once you are standing firm and knowing what you do, go ahead and do it. When you make yourself an enemy to the people, of course you declare yourself an enemy. We didn't make you an enemy. Just like P2B today, how he's trying to make himself an enemy to the Biafran struggle. He is making himself an enemy to the Biafran struggle. He's just coming at the wrong time. A time that he knows that Biafra is drawing close. A time that he knows that Biafrans are standing firm, asking for their freedom. Instead of you standing with the Biafran people, you are there talking trash. You are there preaching a message that you know that will not fly. You want us to wait for another one million years before freedom will come? And you think we'll be part of it? That's rubbish. That's, 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 that's rubbish. Anybody who is there talking about any, 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 any election, how can you, how can you even try to put yourself in a rigged system, system that was rigged against you, a system that was rigged against you. Now you want to be a president in that same system that is rigged against you. A system that is already rigged against you, you want to be a president in that system. How do you think that you can affect any change? How do you think you can affect any change? These people have refused to make amendment in anything. Before we got to this very state that we are, they have been called upon several times to make constitutional amendment, they refused. Even Good Luck Jonathan started it. They couldn't allow Good Luck Jonathan to, to finish it. And for those of you who are jumping up calling P2B, do you think that Good Luck Jonathan wasn't good? Do you think that Good Luck Jonathan is not smart? You think that Good Luck Jonathan doesn't have brain? Do you really think that Good Luck Jonathan doesn't have brain? Or do you really think that good Lord Jonathan doesn't want to make, make your life better? Of course he wanted to, to make your life better. But because of the fraudulent system, because of the fraudulent system, the system is rigged against you, against every indigenous person. Go and check everybody that worked under Jonathan today, all of them have been celebrated all over the world. Every single person that worked under Jonathan, they are celebrated all over the world and they are making them part in the world. They have been celebrated. And any organization where they are being placed in, they are making waves. But why is it that that wave they were making outside, they couldn't make that thing in Nigeria? Why? Because Nigeria is structured to fail. Nigeria is structured to fail. If Peter Obi loved himself, he should, be, he should have been asking for Biafra to be a president of Biafra, not the tribute of Nigeria, because Nigeria will reduce him to nothing. Nigeria will reduce him to nothing. With all this brain and all this sweet mouth, all these things he's saying, Nigeria will reduce, he will, be, he, will, he will fail more than late Muhammad Bukhari. He will be much more degraded more than late Muhammad Bukhari. If he wanted to maintain some dignity, he wanted to be somehow reasonable, he should have joined the Biafran struggle and begin to demand for a disintegration of this very contraption. This, this disintegration of this contraption. When Biafra comes, he can contest in Biafra election. Contest in Biafra election, you win. As soon as you contest, you win. Genuinely, you win. If you are the best, you go ahead and rule. But in a rigged system, a system that is rigged against you, and now you want to stand on that system, you cajole your people to go and vote, even when you know that there is no chance for you anywhere. There's no chance for you anywhere. It doesn't matter how many people vote for you. If, even if the whole Nigeria vote for you, and they say you're not going to be there, you can't be there. That is the way Nigeria is being programmed. Nigeria is not programmed to select their leaders by election. Election that you're just seeing is just a narrative drama. They're just, it's just a movie. They play the movie from beginning to end. After playing the movie, then they will tell you who is going to be there. You want to come into a country through a rigged system, and you think you can affect the change through that a rigged system. A rigged system. A faulty foundation. How can you build something on nothing?
already there is nothing that is existing that is called Nigeria because every indigenous tribe in that country called Nigeria, they are on their own. They know that Nigeria is not meant for them. They know that the contraption called Nigeria, it is not meant for any one of them. That is why there is nobody that is loyal to that contract from Nigeria, including their president, including their ministers, including their lawmakers. None of them is patriotic to the country. No single one of them is patriotic to that very country. No single one of them is patriotic to the country because the country is structured not to favor any one of them. It's not structured to favor the ordinary people, the indigenous people of that very country. It was structured to favor the British because it was a company right from the onset, a company. And today, you will become, you want to run that same company, you want to stand on that same company, begin to run that same company, begin to run that same company to uphold the evil agenda of the British against yourself. And you want me to support you. You want me to begin to campaign for you, for you to come into government through a rigged system to continue to impoverish your people and increase the, the, the suffering in the life of your people. You must be mad. Something must be wrong with you. I say it again. Freedom fighting is not praise and worship. It's not praise and worship. It's either you are in or you're out. It's either you, the system in the contraption called Nigeria is a rigged system. I saw a video where they were showing one of the uh, 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 one of the lawyers, one of the activists, a lawyer, went to court. The way he dressed to the court, he dressed with his traditional wear to the court. I saw the video that was trending on the line, online. A human rights lawyer who went to the high court with his uh, traditional dress, with bead everywhere he put chalk on his face. Because the Muslim people have decided to give permission that people should dress anyhow they want to go to school. That you are free to wear your hijab, it's your right. Wear hijab. Any dressing you like you wear, you go to school. You see the destructive diversity you have in that country of Nigeria. The destructive diversity you have, they try to impose their Islamization on people by all means possible. You are permitting, permitting your Muslim brothers to wear their hijab to government school, to public school, forgetting that you are in a secular country. You are in a secular country. In a secular country, yet you are permitting people to wear religious attire into the school. And today you see, you saw the lawyer, the lawyer dressed in a, in a traditional way, which is native chalk and everything over him, he dressed and go to court. So how are you gonna feel if you are sensible? How are you gonna feel when you see everybody begin to dress in their own, their own in that way? When you see everybody begin to put on their own attire, the way they dress and whatever, how is he gonna look? Well, these people we are looking at, they don't care. All they care is about themselves. Nigeria is not one nation and will never be. The destructive diversity of Nigeria is something that something that must have to be cleared away by all means possible. The diversity is so much. The diversity is so much. There is no we don't meet. There is no meeting point. There is no water and oil cannot mix. It doesn't matter how you shake it. After shaking it, you leave it to separate itself. Water and oil cannot mix. And by the way, I have said it many times that there is nothing wrong in having an Islamic nation. There is nothing wrong in having an Islamic nation. We are not against them. Just like Mazin Nanekano used to say in his brokers. Mazin Nanekano, one of the brokers, he said he doesn't have anything against Boko Haram. Boko Haram, they are straightforward. They say they want a caliphate. They want an Islamic nation. They are coming out openly. Look at what they want. So why don't you give them already? Even when, when they are asking for what they want, the northern governors and their, their governors have introduced Sharia law in their states. They have already introduced Sharia law and they are practicing it. So what stops you from giving them that Islamic nation in the north? What stops you from giving them Islamic nation in the north? Give them Islamic nation in the north, let them relax and let this very movement end. Then they will focus on that very place to build their own nation the way they want to build it. We, the people from the secular side, can still go and visit if we want to visit. But what we are saying is that you cannot carry us and march us into your Islamic nation. You can't march, you can't force us into it. You can't force us into it. You told us that the country where you, the zoological republic is a secular state. That is what you said. That is a secular state. But in that same secular state, you have seen people practicing different kinds of law. Practicing different kinds of law, and they've accepted it. Is it not clear enough to show you that the contraption is not one? 
That is enough reason to let everybody know that the contract. Are yet to wake up from your slumber or your sleep and get the point that we are exiting Nigeria. Exiting Nigeria is not going to come from the platter of Godi plate. You have to sacrifice for it. And we are ready to sacrifice everything, including you. If you come and stand on the way of freedom. So you need to know how serious we are. We are damn serious. Some of you are not getting it. You think we are here to, to make to build political movement? We are here for freedom. Freedom come with price. Okay? The only thing you can do is to comment on social media. Don't ever stand on the way of Biafra freedom. We crush you. Their interest is suppressed. Biafra is the key. Once they can hold Biafra down, they can hold all of Africa down. <laughs> Hey, freedom fighting, sorry. Because all these people are criminals, they are saying there is no way this man cannot be a criminal like themselves. They don't have a different breed altogether. They don't know that. I am an Nam Kano. I don't do all this nonsense you do. My father was a very rich man, not ostentatious. I had the finest education that his money could afford. We are not poor. Have never been. That is why a poor man cannot be a freedom fighter. If you are not full of yourself, you cannot be a freedom fighter. I teach you go everywhere. We must continue.